Oh, <laughs> you're a good girl. Yes, you are. You're going to help daddy. Yes, you are. Pop out windows. It's my second one I'm working on. That's right. There you are. Good girl. Welcome back to the Midday Q&A Mail Call Edition. That's right, it's Monday morning when you're watching this. I'm actually recording this over the weekend, and I'm currently working right now. I actually got called into work a little while ago, and uh, my phone's been ringing off the hook today with a bunch of stupid people calls because people keep unplugging things. I don't know. The good news is when I get halfway there, the calls get canceled, and I'm able to turn back around, but still, it's wasting my time. <laughs> well, we've got some packages here today to open on up. We got this monster big one here. And we got two little ones from China. The big one, I'm pretty sure I know what this is. I think this is what I ordered. And if it is, it should be something really, really special. A couple little packages here from China. Might be one for you, Skeeter. We just don't know. Won't know until you open it. She just got done eating half a pound of shrimp herself. So, uh, yeah, she's had a very, very good afternoon, haven't you? Yes, you have. Yes, you have. You're a good girl. Your head's all wet. Actually, what is on your head? It's wet and crusty. Is it poop? Do you have poop on your head? <laughs> she probably does. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> All right. Well, as always, on Mondays, we open up our boxes. You know, let's get weird. That's right. If there's something you'd like to send to me, hit up duckshit.net, find my address up there, and send it over straight away. And we'll try to open it in a Monday mail call video. Before we get to opening boxes, please like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. Don't forget to check out DuckShit.net for all of my different social media links. That's right. There's a whole bunch of different things that I do and that Skeeter does. Right, Skeeter? Yes, you're a good girl. Sitting in your pizza french fry burger. Yeah. <laughs> pizza french fry burger bed. She got that blanket for her birthday and her bed for her birthday. If you'd like to send something in for Skeeter, just the same. Same address. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Back in just a minute after that intro. Ha! <laughs> All right, well, we are back. Let's bust open these small packages first. I just had a knife over here. Here it is. Boom. This isn't my missing knife. My missing knife has been missing now for a month. I actually lost it just before I hit the record button to the midday Q&A video. So it's probably in this room somewhere and I really don't have any idea where it went. I have no idea, totally clueless. All right, we got a package inside of a package. We got it sealed up pretty well too. What is it? Looks at what it is. Oh, look. It looks like it is, uh, is it fishing line? I think that's what it is. Everything is printed in what appears to be Japanese. Yep, made in Japan. That's the only English that's on it. Um, I am not for certain what it is, but to me it looks like it's probably fishing line. I will almost be willing to bet you that it was ordered at the same time with the, the Kobla reel and that this line was meant to go on it. So... Yeah, that appears to be what it is. I mean, that's what it looks like. I'm not going to go and un unwrap the whole thing just to find out, but it looks like there's there's line in there. So that's probably what it is. So we've got us part of a fishing kit. <laughs> now let's see what's in the other one. I'm going to bet that this is also probably more fishing gear. Almost willing to bet you. This thing is here, we have a constant theme here. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's empty. There ain't nothing in it. <laughs> oh, Skeeter, look at what we got here. Look at this. Oh, my. Look at this. Make sure there's no hooks on them. Nope, no hooks or anything sharp. But they are um, frog babies, the ones that still have the tails on them. If you've ever seen the uh, tadpoles... They start to grow their back legs first. Usually by the time they start getting their front legs, the tail is mostly gone. But uh, that's a tadpole baby right there. Let's see if Skeeter wants it. You want it? <laughs> yeah, you want that, but it's not food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't taste like food. Yeah, she knows better. It looks like food, so she'll taste it, but when she realizes it doesn't taste like food, she won't take it. Yeah, she, she's, she's smart. She's a lot smarter than she lets on. But uh, these are also probably for fishing. Uh, these are probably uh, bait lures. 
Eh. I don't know a whole lot about fishing, but I would say that you hook these on your hook and, uh, well, when they're in the water doing this kind of thing, it makes the fishies all excited and they chase them down. So let's go ahead and put that back in the bag here so we don't lose it. You know what? I had a better bag over here. Let's see. Yeah, the bag that came with the reel, or the, the line rather, would be much better for this. What? They're not for eating. I know you want one, but it's not food. You see? You know it's not food. It doesn't taste like food, does it? If you did swallow one of those, it'd probably kill you. It'd stop you up. <laughs> You're such a good girl. You are. Your daddy loves you so much. Yes, he does. All right. We got us fishing gear. Let's all put this out of the way. Thank you very much for it. As I said before, I'm not a fisherman, but it was said to me that I can re-gift this, and that might just be what I do. So we'll see what happens with it. I've already had people call on me for it that are interested, so... <laughs> We'll see what happens, but I thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. What are you doing, Skeeter? What are you doing? All right, now for the big box. And this is heavy. Rah. Whoa, did that scare you? I'm sorry. <laughs> if this is what I think it is. Box within a box. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is what I think it is. Okay. Yep. That's what it looks like to me. These are Porsche 944 brake calipers. Boom. And these are the ones with the raised letters on them. This is not a decal. This is actually cast into it. And once they get painted and this gets sanded down real nice, it looks really, really good. But I didn't buy these to get a second set. As you know, Eleanor already has a set. I actually bought these for Gregory. Gregory's brakes are getting upgraded. That's one of the things that I'm going to do to him before I make him uh, a driver. And these brakes are with a small adapter kit, almost direct bolt-ons to Gregory. I don't have to have any weird things machined or cut or any of that stuff. The uh, brackets for mounting these is actually fairly inexpensive, and the adapters for mounting the Porsche hubs onto the um, bus spindles is also minor work because the bearings happen to be the same size. They're just spaced a little bit differently. So in other words, all the Porsche stuff just fits with some spacers. Simple as that. All right, these look like it's the other set. I wonder why he zipped this tie to set together, but he didn't zip tie the other set together. And there they are. Get that out of there. That needs to go in the garbage box, not over there. Why don't I just throw it in a pile? You big dummy. <laughs> And there they are, once again, these are the nice ones with the cast logos. They actually raised letters. These might even make their way onto Eleanor. Maybe I'll switch the other side out with Gregory. Gregory's not intended to be as beautiful for show as Eleanor is. And these, um, with the raised letters, I just think look a lot nicer. So these might wind up going on there, whereas Gregory's intended to be more of a uh, tool. You know, he's, he's a utility. He's going to be a running, driving, using bus for the purposes that he was intended for. So do plan for that. I will upgrade the brakes, of course, to make it more drivable, but it doesn't have to be as beautiful as Eleanor. And these are just really, really nice. He's, uh, well, the paint is a little beat up on it. I was going to say I probably didn't have to repaint them. This one looks like it's good. I wouldn't even bother to repaint that one, but this one needs it, so I'll just repaint them all to uh, make them all match and look fresh. So, yep, Gregory's also going to get Porsche 944 brakes. All right, let's put all this out of the way. This is stuff we're going to start working on in August. Updates on Gregory. People keep asking, why don't you work on Gregory anymore? He's sitting out in the backyard all by himself. Well, uh, uh, <coughs> oh boy, almost puked on that one. <laughs> mm. uh, why don't I work on Gregory? He's sitting alone in the backyard all by himself, not being touched. That is correct. 
And for those of you that do watch my videos regularly, you know that Eleanor is shipping out of here at the end of this month, probably by, by no later than the beginning of August. And what that means is that uh, Eleanor is receiving all of my attention right now because uh, she needs to get finished for paint. So I have to finish everything that's on that body that's related to paint. Anything that's going to be covered with paint that I can't do later because I don't want to respray. I don't want to do a patch job later. I want to be once and done. And that's where Eleanor's at. So I need to finish up the hinges on the driver's side. Uh, I need to, well, also finish the hinges on, on the, the right hand side too. It really doesn't need much on that side. A little bit of grinding and welding, that's it. But the driver's side, I need to cut everything out and actually install the hinges. But now that I'm an expert, expert <laughs> once you've done one set the second set gets a whole lot easier and the same thing applies for my quarter windows i need to get these done also these i was going to hold off on and wait until eleanor came back from paint but because people were, were kind of pushing me to demonstrate that these things work properly with my electric motors i got these done instead but the beauty of this was is even when it was raining or when it was dark outside i could work on these on my my bench here inside the house in air conditioning so it really didn't affect my, my release schedule or anything else. Got a lot of videos coming up this week. This is the driver's side window pop out. Um, you guys haven't seen that video yet, but you probably will as soon as tomorrow. I think it'll be a Tuesday morning release and uh, we'll see what happens from there. But things are looking good. I got the glass all cut down. I demonstrated how I, I did that, how I did the fitment on it. And of course this isn't glass. It's plexi, and no, this is not going to go into production. People love to tease me about that. Why would you use something so ugly with paint and garbage all over it and all those streak marks? And I think it's got a gorgeous patina, you know. Doesn't that look good to drive and look through that? I, I think it's just, you know, yeah, yeah. Really, I get asked that question, and kind of a lot. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to be working on that. This is the pop-out window that's going to be converted. So that's going to fit around that by the time I get done with it. Skeeter might help. And my little girlfriend over here, who people have also been asking about, hey, you know, where's she been at? And the answer is she's right here. <laughs> she's really dirty from constantly being touched with hands like this and moved around. She even had feathers stuck to her before I got started today from, from Skeeter. Yeah, I don't want to patch too much Skeeter. Daddy's got like brake dust fingers. Yucky, yucky. So yeah, that's where we're at. And if I get stressed out, I could just smack my sack. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, for watching. As always, Mail Call Mondays. If you want to send me something, hit up duckshit.net, and let's get weird. Up on my website, you will find my address. Once again, duckshit.net. You'll also find links to all my different social media channels as well as all my different YouTube channels. I'm kind of spread all over the place, and my Instagram is growing. So if you're not on my Instagram, you need to be. If you've got a Facebook account, your Instagram account's already there because now they've, they've done that merger, bought out, or whatever the hell it is. So if you've got a Facebook account, it's also your Instagram account. So check out my Instagram. That's where I am when I'm not posting videos. Although for the last several days, i got to say, we've had a pretty good, pretty good release uh, <laughs> schedule going. I had so many videos recorded last week, I just started to finally edit them, and I made combined videos for the pop-out that was on the uh, passenger side that I've been working on. Anyways, I think I've done enough of this today. Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. Really do appreciate it. And we'll see you again for next week, Mail Call Monday. Really appreciate it, guys. See you next time. <coughs> yep, it's raining again. <laughs> Unbelievable. And of course, I hit the unlock button, but I didn't push it hard enough. Oh, it held my keys. There we go. <laughs> okay, we're headed off to getting our mail again today. I understand there's at least one piece waiting. Might be two. Shut that off, that's copyrighted. <laughs> Taking the Z out. Haven't driven her in about a week. Everything should be fine on this car. I don't see why not. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Everybody behind me now. All right. All right, well, we're headed off to our mailbox to collect mail. The uh, other day I went over there to pick up mail, and within 15 minutes, 
of leaving there to get to my destination and all of a sudden they pinged my email again hey you got another package <laughs> it was probably sitting there at the time they just hadn't checked it in yet so we didn't even know it was mine but uh, I'm going back to get it um, I'm trying to record these mail call Mondays uh, several days in advance like on a Friday or a Saturday that way I can go ahead and get that ready for the weekend so Monday morning I can release it to you guys for you guys to see and today is actually Saturday afternoon and I've never been to the, the uh, mailbox on a Saturday I understand they have shorter hours woohoo slippery slippery and that was with traction control on <laughs> traction control drives me nuts turn that crap off trying to put power down it to keep the slide consistent instead of it trying to suddenly uh, tire suddenly grip and it snaps the car in a certain direction sometimes you need to give it a little more throttle just to keep it into that slide so you've got control I need to get right over here hmm I guess I'll slip in here I don't like doing this in this kind of weather though because everybody drives like idiots yeah, we're good. Follow this guy down through the turn lane. Just splashed a guy on the side of the road. <laughs> Driving on a donut, too. Hey, my clickety clackety turn signal's not doing it again. Boy, it is slick out here. Really slick. Anyway, it's been threatening with thunderstorms all morning long. I've been hearing the rumble since about 8 o'clock. It's right about noon now. And finally the sky started to open up. So all morning long I could have actually rolled Eleanor out in the driveway and got a, a thunder video. The thunder all going off at the same time as I would have been recording. I need to get out from behind all this traffic here. What is this? This is Saturday afternoon. Why is it like rush hour? Cars backed up for eighth of a mile? traffic light? It's ridiculous. And we're taking a shortcut. That kind of shortcut always works for me. The only trouble is if you end up with somebody in front of you at this stop sign, they just sit there. Because you do have to cross like six or seven lanes of traffic to make a left up here. And they just get overly cautious and nervous. <laughs> yeah, I'm not nervous. See, watch. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, had I have uh, realized that the storm wasn't going to start raining until about noon, would have had Eleanor out in the driveway and it would have started cutting the template for the left hand side. The left hand side uh, rear quarter window is actually a different size than the one on the right. Now hear me out. I understand that on a stock beetle they're exactly the same size but remember Eleanor was hand built and Eleanor also has a roof chop. So the curve of the glass, the outer border of it, is a slightly different shape on each side and it's not off by much I mean the template will fit from one side into the other but it doesn't go from the opposite side back to the first one because the window is just slightly different in size it's just a little bit bigger and we're talking like eighth of an inch really it's not much at all not much at all in fact if because I had to cut the template uh, the template down to accommodate the uh, border the metal border that goes around it um, it actually might work. The, the shrunken template actually might work on both sides. But nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and cut a new one for that side, and then we're going to form the border around it. I also have to adjust the uh, the motor that's in there, because when I installed the pop-outs, I didn't realize that they sat so far away from the actual um, pinch weld of the windows. It's about, oh, I don't know, maybe half an inch, three-quarter of an inch further away from that to the outside of the car. So the motor has to be recessed even a little bit deeper. But that's not a problem. I put an adjustment on it. I can loosen those bolts up and then bend some of the metal that's underneath it. And um, 
just push that motor. Whoa, hello. <laughs> that was fun. I'm wearing new shoes, so my feeling of the uh, pedals isn't quite the same as it usually is. They're kind of stiff. <laughs> so anyway, as I said, I could push the motor a little deeper into the pocket. That's not a problem. Um, up front where the knuckle is, the part that actually does this to the window, um, there's a little leg that's underneath it. So if you figure this is the arm, the little leg sticks out kind of like that. And that's the part that needs to be pushed a little deeper into the pocket. That's not a problem. I built it out expecting the window to be flush with the pinch weld, and it turns out, yeah, it's just not. So that's not a big deal to adjust out of. Really, it's not. And if for some reason I have no more adjustability, I can actually just put a spacer between the glass and the motor. And I might even change out the ball joint knuckle that's on there anyway and, and use something of my own or something from something else. I don't like those ball joints that are on there. They're, they're, it's plastic on plastic, and even after lubing it, they're, they're just they're sticky. They're just sticky, and that's why the window looks like it's going up and down when I opened it in the uh, past videos. It's a, it's a lot better now that I've lubed it, but it, it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right. I, I think I can do it better, and I, and I just might do it better. In fact, maybe I'll even put two more joints into it rather than a ball joint. Maybe I'll make one joint that's vertical and one joint that's horizontal. out because there's traffic behind me and I just can't go. <laughs> I've got no grip. <laughs> this car is an absolute joy to drive uh, off-road. Now you wouldn't think so. I mean as long as it's not like you know huge ruts of, of three foot deep mud or something. We're talking like just a dirt trail or even a clay road. This car is just an absolute joy. And I think the guys in Top Gear had a, uh, a sport coupe challenge where they did a bunch of different things with them. And I think a Z, 350Z, was one of the ones that they tested. It had absolutely no grippings over here. No grippings at all. Spinning the wheels at 1200 RPMs. It also helps that, you know, I've got like six-cylinder 300 horsepower engine in here with gobs of torque it's not like the Volkswagen um, the Volkswagen motor <laughs> this also has a limited slip differential but the Volkswagen does not so the Volkswagen has more of a tendency to spin one wheel sometimes you can get them both spinning sometimes but usually what will happen is all of a sudden it'll bias to one side and then the car wants to go straight again and it just uh, it understeers it just plows through the front wheels really uncomfortable feeling and I'm wondering if a limited slip differential would uh, make that feel better. It's one of those things that um, I'd like to get. It's going to cost a little bit of money. They're not cheap. Didn't realize you could see me. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, hey. wheels are spinning in fourth gear. <laughs> I was barely on the throttle and the wheels were spinning. So we're coming up on the mailbox here. This particular box has showed up. I don't know what it is. I've got at least three packages to open up this week. There's a lot of grit on the road over here. I can hear it up in the wheel wells. Probably was a dump truck driving down here. Could really kill for some sushi right now, too. I'm a sushi eater. Well, you know I'm an everything eater. If you put it in front of me, I'll put my mouth on it. <laughs> and I'm sure some of my fans out there certainly love hearing me say that, but I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, uh, hmm. Let's just say I usually eat the feline persuasion. <laughs> Check out the jet. 
Yeah, they uh, have an airport over there. And the sushi place that I like to, to uh, go to is actually just a few blocks from here. And when you're eating sometimes at night, the jets will pass so low over the, the building that despite the, the restaurant being noisy from everybody um, shouting at each other instead of talking because that's what they do in the south, um, and the music playing and just, you know, kids screaming, you can still hear that jet. Boy, does it shake the building. And I don't jump out of my skin, but I do certainly go on alert mode. I'm like, what the hell was that? <laughs> it's one of those things that I haven't gotten used to because I don't live that close to the airport. Close enough that they still fly over my house and the wind blows in the right direction. But yeah, they're not like just, you know, 200 feet over my house. We're almost to the mailbox, and over here it looks like they barely got any rain at all. Just a light sprinkle that's hitting the windshield right now. We are here. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. Hey, it had an issue trying to get the car started just now. That was quite a surprise. I was doing something I hadn't seen it do before. I'm hitting the uh, button on the key to unlock the doors, and it just wasn't responding. I mean, not at all. So I used the key, got in the car, and I'm hearing this weird <coughs> kind of sound. And I don't know if it's coming from the power locks or the power windows, but it was definitely coming out of the left door. So I put the key in the ignition and turned the key, and all of the uh, accessory lamps were all flashing. I mean, flashing really, really quickly. And this car has had a myriad of weird electrical problems, but it's always been because of the battery terminals. And I hadn't seen this happen before. Usually it's just like you turn the key and the lights all come on and then they go off or they're really really dim and you get no response beyond that but this time everything was just flickering I mean like really fast so I went under the hood and just um, adjusted the battery terminals and came back in the car turned the key and it fired right up so once again battery terminal problems the terminals on this uh, I think are just a little bit stretched out I've got the bolts on them as tight as they go and, and they're still kind of loose. So I think I just need to replace the ends on it. But the problem with replacing the ends is they don't give you enough wire to cut off that inch to put a new piece on. So I'm probably gonna have to change out the battery wires too. And that's not something I wanna get into. But there are other ways to modify the connector. Of course, I can just crimp the battery uh, clip closed a little more they're just they're steel they're not those big heavy lead ones that you find on the Volkswagen they're actually steel ones which is why they're all stretched out right now I'm trying to shift this thing like I shift the fastback and uh, this transmission doesn't need all that I've got this shift pattern to put it in the third first second and then third is a loop I don't understand that you got to go in a circle the third and then straight back to fourth third has just been a little weird for this past year they had a as you probably remember a bunch of different transmission problems problems with the uh, the linkage problems with the transmission mounts and I don't know if that caused part of the problem because me perhaps forcing it into gear when it didn't want to go because the linkage and stuff was all out of alignment it might have bent one of the hockey sticks or something inside the transmission. And I've learned to live with it. It's just that little loop D that you put from second to third. And it's fine. But once in a while it'll allow me to put it in reverse when I shouldn't. Despite the shifter not being... The trigger not being pulled on the shifter to shove it way over to the left. It'll still go in reverse. 
So I think something inside that transmission has either got a bad bushing or a hockey stick is bent or something like that. I don't know what. And I'm really not too concerned about it because when I go to replace that transmission, if I have to do that, um, and it might even happen this winter when I'm a little short on things to do, I'll be upgrading the rear end to uh, independent rear suspension or IRS as it's known according to Volkswagen World, which is the double jointed rear axles and get rid of the swing axle altogether. It should drive a whole lot nicer then. A whole lot nicer. It won't lean all kinds of goofy in the turns. Never been a fan of the swing axle design of the uh, Volkswagens. All that unusual tire tucking. Not a fan. Well, anyway, I have plenty of IRS transmissions. I have plenty of trailing arms. I have axles. I have everything to do the job, except for the IRS pivot point mounts and the uh, bracket that's designed to hold them in place so that way you can weld them in. So, I mean, I, if I order all that stuff, I think the total cost to me would be like, you know, 150 bucks, 160 bucks, something like that. Not too expensive, really. Not too expensive at all. And I'll just switch everything over. back into the rainy part of town. <laughs> when I pulled up and walked inside, uh, the Roger, the owner of the uh, 2B Postal, where my mailbox is at, he said, man, every time you come, you pull up in a different car. <laughs> slippery, slippery. Turn that damn trash control off driving me nuts here. Whoa! That didn't sound good. When the car started to sway, I accidentally pulled it out of gear. <laughs> and when I tried to put it back in the fifth gear, it uh, didn't like what I did. Slow down, you're going too fast. Oh my God, I'm doing 27. <laughs> oh, I just saw some washing machines on the side of the road. That equates to me as Volkswagen parts. They weren't all the way to the end of the driveway yet. They were kind of halfway up the driveway. It looks like he was going towards the road with him and then maybe it started raining on him and he stopped. But <laughs> might have to drive back down this way later and go see if there's some washing machines because Gregory needs a lot of panels a lot of panels and I'm gonna make as many as I can there's some that are just better to get preformed you know the stuff that has the curves to it like his uh, forehead yeah, you're better off just getting the right the right piece for that but stuff like side panels and stuff and or even the stuff that uh, is around the wheel buckets. That stuff doesn't matter because you'll never see it. You're going to cover it all up with carpet and stuff anyway, so you just start making patches for it. Can't wait to get home and make lunch and I'm sure Skeeter feels the same way. Today I think I'm gonna make chicken parm sandwiches. I've got some really nice chicken tenderloins at home. Throw them up in the air fryer, put some nice cheese on them, and I have a homemade sauce that I have a little bit left of, just enough to put on a sandwich. Skeeter loves her chicken and she loves her tomato sauce. And Boomer eats the cheese. So, <laughs> that, that's kind of weird, seeing as how birds are lactose intolerant. And he'll eat the cheese, but the problem is you give him too much cheese, and then he gets the shits. Being lactose intolerant, they blow it all out. Well, anyway, I haven't much else left to talk about, and I'm not very far from home, so I think we're going to sign off on this one. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Really appreciate you. And, of course, Mail Call Monday will be every Monday. So please like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. 
Boy, it's slippery. Wow. And don't forget to check out DuckShit.net for all my other social media links. And hey, if you want to support this channel, we have a special button, or well, not a button, but a link for rum and cola donations up on DuckShit.net. So throw me a bone. Throw Skeeter a bone. You know, if you don't want to send in a gift, you know, if you want to send Skeeter a couple bucks, I'm sure she'll appreciate that. Just make sure it's for her, and then we'll demonstrate probably in a mail call video as to what we did with the money for her. It's always nice to take care of a little bird. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it.